God's grace, His mercy, and His peace are yours from Him, our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our sermon meditation this first Sunday in Lent comes from our Old Testament lesson, Genesis chapter 3. Here are these selected verses again, verses 8 to 9. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? In The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, the witch in this story, known as the White Witch, she calls herself the Queen of Narnia, she entices a poor, a poor young boy, Bumbly Rumbly Edmund, with a food known as Turkish Delight. Turkish Delight is a tasty concoction that is offered to satisfy Edmund's hunger. But in reality, it only left him wanting more. It was presented to him in a little round box tied with a green silk ribbon. And each piece is described as being sweet and light to the very center. And the more he ate, the more he wanted it. While he was eating it, he lost all sense of his manners and he began spilling information to the wicked white witch while food spilled out his, his mouth because he was so busy talking with his mouth full. When the box was empty, Edmund stood there staring at it, wanting more. What the white witch gave him did not satisfy him. His most basic needs were not met. The, the witch was not able to give him what he needed. Instead, her gifts and her deception caused Edmund's downfall. She was only able to give what she had. His desire for more led him to become her slave, and he brought more trouble on himself and for his brothers and sisters in the story. Now, just like this white witch, the self-proclaimed queen of Narnia, we find in our Old Testament lesson today a wicked, deceitful serpent. Much like the white witch, the serpent Satan is only able to give what he has. He knew this. He knew he was only able to give what he has. And so he, he begins by, by trying to deceive. He tries to deceive Eve into understanding the impression that he was able to give more. Now, Satan was in a fallen state in this story already. We don't get the full details in the scripture of the how or the why, but we see this continuous rebellion and overt work against the Lord our God by the devil. In this story, he adds to the list of his offenses. He lengthens the list for which he is sure and certainly damned to eternal wrath and judgment. He messes with the tov mahod of God's creation, the very good humans that were made in God's image. He messes with Eve, and he does this by twisting the words of God and questioning the woman. Did God actually say? One of the most ancient and timeless and repeated tricks of the devil, first used against Eve, most recently used against you. He tempts you to believe you can have more and more. Satan wants you to believe that more can be yours, more should be yours. Your life can be better by taking action into your own hands. When we face these temptations, we find ourselves in the midst of a battle. Whatever your temptation may be, we face them continually. Whether it's the checkout offer that we have digesting an endless stream of media that we face, the ideal lives portrayed in the pop culture icons that we idolize. Or maybe it's the necessity to inform your family and friends about the latest dirt you've heard. Or perhaps it's the discomfort of living with the daily bread that God gives for your body and life. Ultimately, when we take the time to look at the temptations we face, the temptation is the same. The temptation is to be God and to run it all on our own, to make ourselves God. 
Now there are times when we give in to temptation and we fall prey to the lies of the devil. When faced with these alluring false premises, he, he lies to us and tells us that these things would be good. And when we fall, we receive all that Satan has to offer. We get everything that he has to offer. He gives us a longing for more deception. He gives us a longing for more emptiness, for more falsehoods. He gives us all he has to offer. Satan gives us his misery. He gives us death. He gives us hell. And we see this in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve give in. Satan drags them down to join him under the hot wrath and fierce judgment of the Lord. Satan can only give what he has. And he loves all too much to give us a place next to him in the fiery judgment of God. Now Adam and Eve too, they can only give what they have. In the creation of the world, God had given them the most wonderful gifts to share and to pass down to their descendants. They were created in the image of God. They had his perfect righteousness, pure holiness, and his precious honor. This was theirs to give. This was theirs to pass down to their children. But by giving in to temptation, they lost those gifts. When they take the forbidden fruit and take a forbidden bite, they find they are exposed, not only in body, but most importantly, in soul. They feel shame for their failure. Sin brings guilt on their perfection. No longer do they have the righteousness, the pure holiness, and precious honors that was theirs to give. What they have, they can no longer give. Instead, now they have something else to give. They give to their descendants their judgment that is leveled against them by God. They give the pain of childbirth that we hear cursed in this, this account from Genesis. The curse of the ground, the struggle of obtaining daily bread. And so we, and we have these gifts. We experience these gifts. Not only is childbirth hard, but the struggle of parents to conceive at times. The tragedy of losing young children before it's held in the arms for some parents. The pain that doesn't end in childbirth. The pain that goes on far too often. The pain that plays out as children turn against their parents and dishonor their parents. And worse yet, turn away from the faith of their parents. And the toil of the ground and the sweat of the ground is passed on to us as well. This plays out so many ways in our life. Working ourselves to death. We face impossible tasks at times. Demanding taskmasters are over us. At other times, the pains of this labor often reveal themselves not only in a sweaty brow, but in a failing body with the effects of sin and death playing themselves into ailments. The struggle of obtaining daily bread is ever before us. The curse that was placed on Adam and Eve echoes to our lives. Ultimately, the curse is seen in the thing that God never intended. The mortality of man that came into the world through sin. The wages of sin is death. And we see the greatest effect, the saddest gift that we receive from our first earthly parents is that we cannot escape from death. Now despite this condition, the Lord God still has things to give for us. And just like Satan, just like Adam and Eve, God can only give what he has to give. God has perfect righteousness, pure holiness, and precious honor. And the tarnish of sin is not something his perfection can endure. His name will be kept holy and he will be honored, even if it means, and it does mean, that his wrath will burn against sin. And he will cleanse it by destroying it. see our God react in an unexpected way in this story today. When he approaches Adam and Eve, instead of a furious, burning, fiery wrath of a response, God responds in a very cool way. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? In the cool of the day, God approaches.
approaches them. God, the Holy Spirit, approaches them. In the Hebrew in the Hebrew text of this verse, the words behind the cool of the day, we see the same word for the Spirit of God that hovered over the surface of the deep in creation. The same Spirit of God that comes to us in the waters of baptism. And that Spirit of God comes to Adam and Eve in the same way that He comes to us. Through His Spirit, He approaches them. And He comes to them with a promise. He doesn't give up on His creation. He doesn't give up on Adam and Eve, and He will never give up on you. There is no stopping in God. No abandoning His people. He cannot give up effort because He does not have any quit in Him. So he cannot give up on you. Instead, he gives what he does have. He gives a promise that finds fulfillment in a baby that was born in the cool of the night at Bethlehem. The Holy Spirit again sending messages by the angels to the shepherds as they were tending to their flocks. Yet the wages of sin remains to be death. And God does have wrath to give. But he also has a son to give. In the cool of the morning, cool enough to call for a fire as the disciples and the onlookers warmed themselves. God's Son, Jesus, remained cool under pressure, facing a trial full of false accusations. He faces a cruel crowd crying, crucify him, crucify him. And he kept his cool, even to the point of death, giving it all for you as the Father gave all the wrath he had against your sins. And while Satan offered what he didn't have to give, just like the white witch offering something that was not really theirs to give, ultimate satisfaction, Jesus has that, and he offers it for you on behalf of you, ultimate satisfaction for our brokenness. And so he gives his holy, innocent, precious blood in exchange for peace between God and man. The sacrifice of Christ appeased the wrath of God. It ends the winter of sin that holds us in bondage, just as Aslan did in the story of Narnia, ending the winter. Christ gives his life for ours. He gives his value, making us who are worthless, worth everything. Us who are lifeless and dead in sin are made alive in Christ through that which is His to give. So He gives His heel, planted firmly on the head of the serpent, evident on the empty tomb of Easter morning, that assurance that the wicked one had no power over the one who gives it all. The place where we receive that giving is here in this church, in the washing and the renewal of baptism where Christ comes to you. The Holy Spirit is alive there washing you in the cool of the day, removing your sin and guilt. And Christ invites us to continue to come and receive this strengthening gift through the lives of repentance that we are called to lead. Through His body and blood at this altar where He gives you all that He has. And He recreates you to live a life that shares the good news of His giving with the world that needs it. Satan still wants to give you what he has and to promise you what he cannot. He would love to rob you of your robe of righteousness that you have received in baptism. Do not listen to that liar. Keep your eyes and your ears fixed on Jesus, your Creator and your Redeemer. Jesus has fully and completely endured the just wrath and condemnation for sin, guilt, and shame. That's gone. It's spent now. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. All that's left for God to give is forgiveness. And what God can give, He gives to you this day and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue our service by singing together today.